Hey, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me again today. I've got another really great trick to teach you. Uh, again, from Bobo's new modern coin magic. Uh, in today's video, it's coins through the table and specifically Milt Quartz version. And there's some other versions in here, which I'll talk about in a second. But this one in particular is very fooling and, and my favorite version in here. I, I taught last week a, a coins across using a gaff and I specifically uh, taught that one first and then I'm going to teach you this one uh, for reasons I will get into now. So let's dive in. So in Bobo's, if you turn to page uh, 276, you see the coins through the table there by Milton Court. Now just a side note, this will save you a lot of time. If you study just Milt, Milton Court's contributions to the book, you have some of the best material already. Uh, Milt Court was a good friend of Bobo's and, and contributed a large portion of the tricks in the whole book. So if you have a day where you're do not doing anything, go in the index and look up Milt Court's name and then study each of those tricks because they are all just bangers. <laughs> so the reason I wanted to focus on on his version was uh, not only is the methodology very uh, economical and fooling, but the ending, this is where we see, uh, like in many coins across, the four coins are laid in a spectator's hand and then you lift away what's the fourth coin and then you have that arrive in their hand. That's, as far as I know, that's where this originates in this trick. Uh, I can't be totally certain from uh, about that, but uh, I haven't seen it anywhere else and as early as this. So originally this was 1952, the, when the first version was published. So going back that far, that's, that's as best I can do. And um, again, if you have some time, in the description here, it references page 193. So going back here to the coin classics section, you'll see the magical filtration of four half dollars by Al Baker. This is an ungimmicked version, just four coins. Uh, again, a very straightforward and efficient handling. And then before this trick, it has uh, what Bobo describes is maybe the origin of the idea of, of this plot, coins through the table. And uh, this comes from the magician Han Ping Chen. And read through these versions and you'll see the, the Han Ping Chen move described uh, in the context of the coins through table. So. Yeah, you could spend a day on, on this uh, little trick here, starting at page 190, read, read the very original version, and then Al Baker's version, the magical filtration of four half dollars. And D David Roth used to perform this version right here. And finally, going into the, the shell and folding half section, to Milton Court's version, just to see the evolution of things and ideas. I think it's really important to uh, wrap your head around stuff. So with all that in mind, uh, let's take a quick look at a performance. And I have a special guest today. So today I've got the help of my lovely assistant, Noelle. This is my other daughter. And that's N-O-E-L-L-E. -E. She wants you to know. So Noelle. Can you help me with this trick? Yeah. All right. Look at these coins. Make sure they're solid. Nothing weird. You've seen some of my, my trick coins. These aren't trick coins. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. 
four normal coins. Now look at this glass. Are there any holes in it? No. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm going to take these coins and push them through the table. You believe I can do that? Yes. You do? Yeah. Well, to prove it, I'm going to take the glass underneath the table so you can hear when they arrive. Okay, okay. look, nothing in the glass, mm -hmm. nothing in my hands. Watch. Watch up here. I'm going to leave these three over here. I'll take this one and push it through. Did you see that go through? Here, I'll do it again. I'll take the three coins. There's one already in there. Look, there's nothing in my hands. I'm going to take the glass under the table and push another one through. Ready? Here, I'll put these two over here. Take the, la the third one. Right there. Check it out. There's two coins. And there's two up here. Go ahead and put those in the glass. Look, nothing in my hands. I'm going underneath. I'll put that one over there and push this one through. If I did that, there should be three. three. That looks pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. It feels even cooler. Yeah, it's really cool. Here, hold your hand right here. I'm going to let you feel what it's like. So that's one, two, three, four. I have to push the fourth one through, but this time here, close your hand. I'll take the fourth one and push it up and into your hand. Okay. So you watch it go under. Are you ready? Put it right here. Ready? Did you feel it? <laughs> no. Open it up and count them. One, <laughs> two, two, three, three. what? <laughs> Was that cool? Yeah. <laughs> nice. So that was the basic performance of Milton Quartz version of the coins through table. And uh, it does involve a gaff. The same thing we talked about in the previous video. If you haven't seen the last video, um, the peregrinating halves. Take a look at that video because these tricks, they can go uh, back to back uh, and they employ the same gaffed coin. What we're dealing with here is four coins and a turtle. Now, I slightly varied the handling because my daughter was standing right next to me, but I still accomplished the main move described uh, in the description here. And I also began in a different way. Uh, I took the beginning of the move from the peregrinating halves, which I talked about in my last video. So the gaff was out of play in finger palm. And I started with the coins in the cup. So you can have the spectator uh, inspect everything involved here. And it's best to start with the coins. So then you can pick up the coins add the gaff, have them look at the glass. While they're looking at the glass, you lay uh, what appears to be the four coins out, but now I've stolen one away. So by the time they've looked at the glass and everything's good to go, I'm still in finger palm here and I can hold the glass up like this. This is the same glass uh, that Kaino Harbottle uses for his wonderful routine Victorian coins and glass. So this, this is a nice shape. It, it fits my hand. It's, it's easy to hold. And I can conceal a coin in finger palm. You can conceal a coin pretty much right under the glass. If you've worked with this, they can look right at the bottom and there's nothing to see. They don't, they're not going to see a coin there. You can even go like this, have them look one more time before you go under. Uh, Let's get an over the shoulder shot real quick of this opening sequence. So starting out, I've got my gaff finger palmed and they inspect 
the coins first. So I get those out of the way. I just throw them on top of my gaff. And while they're looking at that, we lay the coins out on the table. So the coins will, the bottom coin will have my gaff on it. I'm just going to flip over the stack and then lift away the top three coins. The gaff is now on the top coin. So as I, I lay these out, I let uh, the coin uh, come out of the gaff there. And so by this point, they've looked in the glass. Now I can, I can hold the glass like this. <laughs> it's a beautiful display. There's nothing to see. Uh, I can see that, that coin if I'm trying to, but from their direction, uh, there's nothing to see in the glass. So before you go beneath the table, you can give them one last look. And just a note on that, I've changed the handling in this part because I think it's much better to, to hear the coin arrive. And you do hear the coins when you're barehanded, but you don't hear the first coin. So in the book, it describes putting the glass over these coins, which will uh, nest your gaff. And then you can make some kind of noise under the table and have the first coin appear. But I think it's a much better idea to do the opposite, uh, have the coins up here and then have that sound. It's just a much, uh, it, it plays bigger. If people, if you have a lot of people around the table, they might not see what you're doing, but they can hear what's happening. And then along with that, if you read through the other versions of coin through table, they'll often take all the coins at once and smack them on the table, but then only one of the coins goes through. And I, that never sat right with me. If you're really pushing coins through table, you should take one coin and push it through the table. Don't take a pile of coins, slap them down and have only one of them go through. It's, it's just not logical. So for the other reason, I put the glass underneath and then I, I gather these up. So my gaff, uh, does its thing. And then I just say, I'm going to put these three over here and I'll take this one and push it through. So that's the first coin. And now my favorite thing about this handling is, is this part when you're getting ahead, you stack the remaining coins with your gaff on the bottom. Then as you slide this stack away, that coin falls right in your lap. And it looks like you're just gathering these up so you can place them in a row again. So, so that, you know, everything's clear for the spectator to see, but now you're one ahead and it looks absolutely invisible. Now it's at this point, the coin goes back in the glass and I, I make mention of the remaining coins here. That's when I, I just reach down and, and I palm the coin in my lap. You don't have to do that at this moment. I just chose to do that so that it's less, less fussy. And again, you can have them look in the glass one last time. And from here, it's just repetition. I'm going to move these two and put this one through. And then you have them look at those. You're going to put your real coin on top of your gaff, sweep this stack off the edge so you can place them down. I'm one ahead. There's one coin in my lap. And again, uh, I kind of did this handling because my daughter was standing right next to me, but I don't have to get that coin right now. We can, we can put these in the glass. I can get the coin right now as I'm going under and now I'm, I'm holding it like this. So the, I literally just grabbed the coin off my lap as I'm holding the glass. So now as I go under, I'm going to move one of these out of the way and push the other one through. So boom, three coins have gone through. Now we're set up for the, the finale, the, the, the coolest coin. So I say, you know, that looks really good, but it feels even, even cooler here. Hold your hand out here. That's one, two, three, 
and four, the last coin. Here, close your hand, and I lift the gap away. And this is cool. We, you're literally ditching the coin under the, the guise of pushing it under. So they see the coin. As I go under, I just set it on my lap and then knock on the table, make some kind of noise. They can open their hand. You tell them, open your hand and count out the coins or count them into the glass. That way everybody can hear four, four clinks. And in that amount of time, you can get the gaff again and maybe ditch it in your pocket up here, ditch it in your pants pocket as you stand up and, and you're watching them count. So it allows for time to even clean up completely. And now they can, anybody can inspect their props and it's, it's just a fantastic trick. Now I mentioned earlier about performing the peregrinating halves and uh, this together and really any gaffed coins across could go right into this. And in fact, it reminded me of an article I read from Jamie Ian Swiss, which I'll link down below this video. Uh, but the article is about coin magic and, and David Roth specifically, how he changed and evolved coin magic, his approach and, and the meaning behind the things he was doing. Anyway, when you read that article or essay, uh, he even hints at a set that David Roth would often perform. And he didn't use a gaff, but he used an extra coin, a fifth coin. So he'd begin with the coins in the Okido box, dump them out on the table, and he'd often do a coin through table, followed by a coins across, wing silver, followed by an assembly, a Chinese coin assembly, and then he'd end on a one coin routine. And the idea uh, Jamie talks about is uh, doing the coins through table. Uh, Roth would explain, you know, that was pretty good, but you couldn't see what was going on underneath the table. Let me do that again for you above the table. Watch, the coins will go from this hand to this hand. And so it, it was a natural progression of these concepts and ideas. And that article is a really good read and it can give you some insight into how to think about your coin magic. And hey, if it worked for David Roth, it'll work for you. So consider going from a coins across to a coins through table. And Jamie even talks about uh, how he does the opposite. He does a coins across first. And he uses the same excuse as that, you know, that was pretty cool, but uh, you might not have seen me do some sleight of hand. Let me put a barrier between my hands. So then he'll do the coins through table. Honestly, the two tricks are very similar in methodology, but it's a great study in how changing a, a little thing can make a trick feel like a different trick. So all that's being added is a table. You, you don't even have to use the glass, uh, but that, that even elevates it uh, further than just barehanded. So consider these ideas when you're, when you're looking at coin magic and two different tricks. Are they really that different? Is, but is the methodology, you know, does that make it the same trick? what's what's making them feel different when the methodology is almost the same so uh i really encourage you to read that article and and uh hopefully you'll pick up something from that so that's it for today's video i really hope you enjoyed that if if you like what i'm doing here consider uh, giving a donation and no pressure at all that's down below i want to thank david ducharme again for his donation uh I got that and I, I thank you so much, David. And uh, yeah, I'm enjoying going through Bobo's and hopefully breathing new life into these great routines for you. So stay tuned for the next one. It's going to be a surprise.